Hello everyone. This is the second masterclass that I now hold every second Thursday and uh, they aim to help you whatever you are struggling with. So today in particular I'm going to share some tips how to mat your texts on your website because sometimes we have a lot to say and uh, we kind of try to pack it all in and the result sometimes is that it's just too much for the reader to manage to read. Um, sometimes the readers just get this overwhelmed when it sees a lot of text. So I'm going to share today some tips about that. But in general, I would like to say as well, if you have any special topic that you are interested in for me to have a live about, please write me about it because I'm always welcoming your ideas. These lives are really here to help you. So don't be shy about sharing what you would like to hear about, what you're struggling with on your website, because it really is for you, this group, and to help you out with anything that you're struggling with and to give you some tips for free when you need that. So today I'm going to start off just teaching you a little bit. Um, I'm working in WordPress, but no matter what kind of system you use, there are some rules that always apply. You might hear my neighbor in the background here. He's quite vocal, but he will disappear soon. <laughs> so I will start out with just an overview here. Let's see, I'm just going to find the right tab. Um, yeah, I want to just inform you like all websites basically have a set of headings, for example, and the style for these headings are different for different websites. It depends really what the theme you have has provided in terms of styles for the various headings. You can also customize these headings if you know a little bit of code or if you work with a uh, um, plugin or a builder that, for example, you might be familiar, some of you, with a page builder called Elementor, um, DV, the DV theme or the DV plugin. It's these uh, tools, the page builder tools that help uh, build pages without knowing a lot of code. Uh, very often they have, well, I know, not very often, they always have an option so that you can tell the systems like, okay, heading one should always look like this, heading two should always look like this, heading three should always look like this. So in this case here, I have a bunch of different headings that I have programmed to look in different ways. And uh, this is something that you can always keep in mind to use headings throughout the text. We're going to look at like a big bunch of text that I have here later in the Facebook Live that I'll show you the initial text that I have and I'll show you what I have done with it to make it more readable and easy to digest, as I usually say, for the reader. But first I want to give you some insights to like WordPress out of the box. If you work with WordPress, we'll always have options for headings. Uh, you may have, um, for those of you who do work with WordPress, you will be familiar with the, the, the visual editor. This is like the backend where you write your text. It's a little bit slow now since I am live. So as it's finished thinking here, but you will see here soon. Yes, you will be familiar with this little menu. It's almost like a little Word document. And here, the different headings when you have some text. Let's say I want to add some text on top here. Uh, here, some text. Right now, it comes in heading one because it's kind of picking up the style from that one. But here, you will have the option to choose heading three, heading four, and so forth. And although you don't see here the colors and so forth, it's already pre-programmed to show in a certain way. So I think heading four had a uh, specific color. So if I click preview now, you will see the difference. So here's the heading four, picking up the color of that one. But just to let you know, you always have headings to, to play around with. Um, I'm going to show you the style on another website because here I've just been putting together some headings to show that there are differences. But I was just working today with this lovely lady, Holly. And um, here are the headings that we have kind of created and styled for her website so that it really fits with her coloring and with the font that she uses. So here it's quite nice that she has, well, heading one is always just for the page title. It's quite important to keep that in mind for SEO. Heading ones on pages and posts are um, it's kind of heading that you should not use throughout your text because Google is looking for 
what kind of heading ones are around to find out what the page is about. So just make sure to not confuse Google by having heading ones throughout the text. Just use it one time on the top. Usually it's in, in the title already here. That's the H1. So this one is already a, a, an extra heading one that shouldn't be there. But I just wanted to show you that we styled it like this. And you have the different headings here. Secondly, besides from headings, um, we're going to use that later today in the text I'm going to modify. But you also have something called quotes. Um, whether you work with the WordPress editor, whether you use this one, or if you work in any other system, maybe you use the block editor. That is the other system here in, in WordPress that you have more of a click and drag. You might, some of you who work a bit on your website, you might be familiar with the block editor also referred to as the Gutenberg, which came out a few years ago to help people who find this system a little bit too techy and not looking the way uh, it looks on the front end to have like a click and drag option. Uh, there you also have a click and drag headings and you can click uh, when you click in a section for heading one or heading two, you can always change it as a drop down like this. Um, if you have any questions about this, if what I'm saying now doesn't quite make sense to you, but you know you're working with the block editor or uh, with Gutenberg, just feel free to ask me and I will try to help you out. Just ask in the group. You can always use this group to ask questions. But besides from all these things, we also have a lot of other formatting things on this menu uh, that people don't really use very often. There's something called a uh, block quote. Uh, you see in my case, my block quote is not very exciting. This is it. This is how the theme, how it came to me. It was formatted just like that. But if I go, for example, to Holly's website, here the developer of her theme, so when I say theme, I mean the template uh, on which the website is is created and that kind of a starting point, have designed it much nicer with these lines and this quote thing going in the middle and being a little bit more fancy. So uh, you might have a try, like if you are in your uh, website editor, no matter what it is, either if it's this one, you can click here, like when I want to add here, let's also add a quote. So here it's heading one, so I don't want that anymore. I want it to be a paragraph and I want it to be a quote. You can click this one and it will give you that quote symbol that we have here. Uh, so you can have a look to see what it looks like for your theme. Sometimes it looks really nice, sometimes it's quite boring, like the one I have, but it makes some of the text stand out a little bit. Another thing that I use a lot uh, is bullet points. Sometimes you realize you might have a paragraph that you're mentioning, hey, do you have this, this and this and that, and you're kind of mentioning different scenarios or different things you want to say. Sometimes it helps to just break that up into bullet points. It makes it so much easier for people to read it. And you will see that later as well when we get to the actual text that I'm going to modify, that I break a lot of it up in bullet points so that it's super easy to read it and to just like get the information in a quick way without having to read all like a big bunch of dense text. Also the number list here, I mean these are the things you find in the menu. So you see here, here the bullet points, numbers list, and um, you have also here something that I use quite a lot actually. It's such a small simple thing and it makes a huge difference. Is this line and you see here on the menu, it's just a horizontal line, click, that you can click here. If you use the block editor or any kind of page builder, you will always have a little uh, kind of, uh, it's called different things in different uh, systems, a little module or a little block of content that will uh, be usually called horizontal line or a div divider line. Very often it's called a divider line. So have a look for that to create some division lines in between. And you will see it later again when we actually work on the text, how that can be done. Oh yeah, this is just to show as well, if you have a little text, just highlighting some words like with bold, <laughs> it actually makes a big difference because people usually read the things that are highlighted. And lastly, there are emojis. Emojis are getting more acceptable online, even like for serious businesses. Having, of course, not a website full of emojis, uh, it's cool, but every now and then it's okay not to be so serious. In general, I always say on websites like show your personality and sometimes having some emojis actually lightens up the mood a little bit. So you can actually add emojis. You don't have it here in the menu, but you have here, um, you can go to this website. I will go quickly now just to show you. Okay, we have to wait here. Okay, yes, there we are. So here you have all the emojis that we are used to. So you can click here and choose different emojis. And basically, uh, let's see, I'm gonna choose one here that uh, I 
tried before, like the beaming face with smiling eyes. So you can go here and you can basically just click copy and paste it into your text. What is quite important with the emojis is that it don't look the same on different devices. And on this one in particular, I just noticed today, it says appearances uh, differ greatly across platforms, use with caution. So when you scroll further down here, if you want to make sure that you know what your emoji looks like, not just on your computer, but other people's computer, depending what they have, here you can see what it looks like on all the others. And that's also quite good because like, uh, it looks quite nice maybe on mine. I really kind of fancy this, this Grimus face a little bit and this smiley face. But when I look down here, and see what it looks like on some other devices. So far it's okay. Uh, might not be a fan of all of them. But then I saw here, further below here, that suddenly you have like in Mozilla, you have this baby face kind of thing thinking and SoftBank, I don't know if that is even, and it's like, wow, this is not pretty anymore. <laughs> this is not what I wanted to look like. So just keep that in mind. Just a little side note on emojis. So um, yeah, but you can always copy paste and put that in. And yeah, what about pictures? I always put that. Uh, having images in your text really helps to break it up. And it makes a big difference that people feel that it's not just text. As well, going back to our little menu here, and you will have this whenever you use any other kind of editor, be it Elementor or DV, whatever you have like a block that is text. In the text, when you click in the text block, you will usually see a menu like this anyway. And um, you will have these options to bold and to put italic. So basically, you probably know this from Word, like you can click here to make it different. And uh, underline is actually not on the menu here, but if you mark a word and put control and U on your keyboard, it will actually make the underline there. So yeah, I always heard like, if you use both bold and italics and underline, you know, that's a little bit exaggerated, but <laughs> in some cases you might want to do that too. Just always have a look afterwards how it looks in the preview. Uh, I'm just going to show you what it looks like on, on Holly's website here compared to mine. Um, here you see her different, like the quote is really nice, the bullets are nice, um, here the emoji. Yeah, it wasn't such a big difference actually. So I'm going to move on to the, the text that I wanted to show you. So I have a big bunch of text here. So I get from the client sometimes, I get a uh, text like this, not very formatted or formatted very little. And when I put that on the website, just as it is, this is what it looks like. And if I, as a visitor, would come into a website and I see all this, unless I'm super, super interested in the topic, I would be like, oh my God, this is a lot of text. I don't know where to start. Maybe I start reading a little bit. Maybe then I get interrupted. Like I always say, people get interrupted and distracted super easily. There's a notification here maybe from Facebook. I get a WhatsApp message. Uh, food's burning, you never know. So uh, I soon lose my interest here unless it's really a moment that I can focus for a while and I really want to read the text. And that doesn't happen very often. So us as website owners, we need to make it easier for people. So I'm gonna show how this page ended up looking after I kind of modified it um, here on this page. Let's see, I'm just gonna pick out the preview. So here you see this is the exact same text, but I have added an image here. I have used the lines as you saw. This is the, I think it was the H4 heading. Um, I have put this here in the middle. Here I would maybe have liked to have some other kind of graphic if you have it. Always think that you can put something in between to divide the text a bit. Here, a header as well in a different color. And the text here, it wasn't in bullet points when I was sent this text, but when I was reading it, I'm thinking, yeah, this feels really like a list of uh, findings. So it's easier to do like one, two, three bullet points here. And some sentences will always be good to emphasize. So I think when I read the text, when I start here and read the text, I'm thinking, okay, I'm reading this, what parts do I read that I feel, wow, this is really an essential piece of information that I want everyone to see independent of if they read the whole text or not. And a great way to do that is to put that like a line above and a line below and put the text in the middle. This is like an H4 heading and I added this line on top and bottom, simple as that. You could also have a look and use the quote function for this, depending what it looks like for your theme. Uh, the bullet points here, I uh, put here in italics. This is kind of a little extra information that is not super important, but it's nice to have there. So I just added that in italic as it's like, okay, some little sub note here. And here a heading again, you can maybe make it bold even to make it pop up out a little bit. 
Um, and what else we could do here? Basically, this has been very basic formatting that I showed you in, uh, in this live. Um, there are more things you could do that I haven't mentioned here. We have like a testimonial plugin. It's one that is called Easy Testimonial that I use sometimes. So you could, when it's suitable, add testimonials in between. So let's say here that I wanted to make a little bit of division between the bullet points and the next section. I could add here a section with testimonials. Also maybe adding, you know, the lines above and below or something to make that stand out a bit. Um, here I added another image just to fill it up a bit. And I'm gonna show you quickly how to make a button. There is a function already with WordPress and you can try that out. The button will look the way that uh, the web, or oh, sorry, the theme developer has decided for it to look like. It can be styled. Uh, if you know a little bit of code, most of you might not know so much code, So, but you can give it a try because sometimes it's fun to see what style your button has on your website. And usually I work here in the visual editor, as we've been doing here for the different things and use this menu, but you also have something called the text editor. And when you click here, you see all the codes that have been added. Um, for example, for the H4 headings, you see here H4 kind of opens up and H4, it closes. So you'll see like the HR, this is the line. You'll see a lot of codes that make sense when you start looking into it, but no need to learn that in particular. What I wanted to show you is that uh, if you venture into the text editor, then you can try to add a button and the way to do that, you have open a button tag and then you close. And um, here your button text. So when I just click here now, preview, you can see, I'm just gonna let it finish thinking. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna go down here now, you see my second button here. Of course, when I click on it, nothing happens because there's no actual link attached to it. As opposed to this one, it will go to my contact page. But it's kind of fun to see that you have this function already in your theme that this is a way to create a button. And this is a little bit more geeky, but I add this here at the end of the video so that for those who you want to play around, you can do that. Once you kind of added the code um, on each side here in the text editor, feel free to go back to the visual editor. You find your button here. Uh, the, so triple click, kind of mark the whole text, and then you can add the link. And basically, I always click the wheel because sometimes you want to open the link in a new tab, especially if the link goes into a different website. Or I wanted to go, in this case, to my contact page. I just search for here, my contact page, and I see I have it Oops, here. Click add link. And there we go, the link is added. You don't need to do any code for that. You just add links like you would usually do when you work with the, the classical editor. And when we go down here, you see uh, when I click on the button, it brings me to my contact page. So yeah, that was uh, basically what I wanted to show you in this live. Uh, you've been learning uh, bits and pieces here of kind of light formatting. If any of you are interested in anything more advanced, feel free to ask in the BizLadies group. And, or to ask me directly if you want some help with this or some one-on-one -on -one kind of guidance. I also always offer like consulting hours for those of you who play around with your website yourself and every now and then maybe need just half an hour or an hour of some extra support. I always provide this, it's one of my services. So it's not always necessary to have like a full web design um, service. Uh, sometimes it's really nice to play around it on your own and uh, try to learn new things. So for those who you are into that, but just need some extra help that is beyond the free help I can give in the group, there's also the option to have uh, uh, kind of a Zoom call with me where we can do it together or I can show you how to do different things that you want to do. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this um, session. Any questions I will answer that come in the comment or you will find this video also on YouTube once it's uploaded there. So yeah, thank you very much. I wish you all a nice evening.